Hey, thanks for joining us at Church Online. I'm so glad that you tuned in today. You could be doing anything, but you put this time aside to honour God and to gather together with like-minded people. You know, we're gathering online. There's chat rooms we can be talking uh, to each other in. And uh, I just want you to not take for granted what we're doing. You know, soon we'll be gathering together in our physical buildings. But at the moment, as you're aware, we, we're meeting this way. But come on, let's not neglect gathering together as some are in the habit of doing, but let's keep gathering. Let's keep inviting people to experience church with us this way because I know that as we gather together, God does something in our midst. And I believe that today God's going to do something through this service because what we've been talking about is uh, we've been doing a series called Strong and Courageous. And I think all of us, when we look at different parts of our life, have areas in our, our life where we wish we had a bit more strength or a bit more courage. Maybe it could be in dealing with a conflict, dealing with a relationship. Uh, it could even be with sharing your faith. I, I don't know what it is for you, but I just know that if we look at ourselves and we ask ourselves that question, is there areas in our life where I wish I could have more strength and courage? I'm pretty sure we could all identify some areas pretty quick uh, on, on where we wish we had some more strength and courage. And, and that was the real reason why I started this series. Now we're up to part five today, and we just got one more week after this one. But I just wanted to spend a bit of time just opening the Word and just talking about Joshua. I've been going through the book of Joshua and focusing in on, the, on the, uh, the, the person of Joshua and how he's developed strength and courage in his life. And, and we've just been focusing on him and just learning some principles of what we can apply to our life so that we can see God's strength and courage continue to become stronger and stronger in our life. Because I believe that, yeah, God can give us supernatural strength and courage for tasks, but I believe what God loves to do, He likes to take us on a journey, which He wants us to trust in Him so that on the journey we can develop strength and courage, so that we can face all the things that come our way, so that we can become bigger people. But the topic I want to talk about today is this, impossible requests. You know, as parents, sometimes our kids ask us impossible requests that we can't meet. But we've got to realize the God that we serve, He is the God that can do the impossible. And we've got to, I think sometimes we've, we've stopped asking God because we think, oh, God can't do this. But let's remember that our God can do all things. And we're just going to keep coming and, and petitioning Him, bringing our requests to Him, even if they seem impossible, even if it seems like they can't be done. Keep petitioning God, keep asking God. And I really believe that as we do that, God does something in our spirit that begins to develop strength and courage so that we can face everything that comes our way. So I want to talk about the impossible for a few moments. You know, my, my father, as many of you know, he's a, he's a pastor. He's, uh, he, he pioneered a church, I think, 35 years ago, which he's still pastoring today in Liverpool. And um, you know, when he went to Liverpool, people would tell him, don't go. It's an impossible place to be able to, 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 to uh, build a church. They've called it the preacher's graveyard. But you know what? My father is one of those people, like many people, that when they say it can't be done, it makes them want to do it even more. And, and he moved um, my mom and himself and my brother at that time, they were pregnant with me, to Liverpool to pioneer a church. You know, I, I think pastoring a church is, has its challenges, but also having a young family has its challenges. And you look at that situation, you think it's impossible. But I just know that as my dad and mom kept being obedient to God and kept serving that community, God did something that seemed impossible. They grew a large church in a place where they said it was a preacher's graveyard. You know, and I know that in that time, my dad prayed many um, impossible requests. He asked many impossible things of God. And I know that on that journey, God showed up and he met him where he needed him to meet him. And God breathed on his obedience. And today we see many people that have uh, come to know Jesus and discover their gifts and talents because of their obedience and, and not stopping where people said it was impossible, but kept trusting in God and kept petitioning God until something broke. You know, I, I just think in our lives, we've got to remember that man, the impossible isn't a, a wall for you just to stop and bounce back from. The impossible is, for, is a, an opportunity for us to experience God's miraculous power in that situation. So come on, I just pray as we go through this scripture today, that faith would stir in your heart, that, that you would begin to believe God in a greater way. 
Because you know what, in my spirit, even when it comes to doing church this way, you know, the, the last few weeks, it's almost like, you know, I just can't wait for, for, for it to get back to normal and, and just starting to, to let that creep into my spirit. But, but I just even felt as I was preparing this word that God stirred something in my heart to say, hey, the church is just firing up. We're just getting started. Even though we can't meet the way that we want to meet, God is doing the miraculous. We're getting the word of God into people's homes that haven't experienced the word of God before. Come on, let's not let our eyes be downcast. Let's not let the tasks, the impossible tasks, uh, cause us to, to feel defeated. But let's let faith rise up. And I know today that faith's going to rise up in people's spirits today. Because the, the scripture that comes to mind is in Luke 18, 24. And it says this, What is impossible for people is possible for God. Come on, let that stir in our hearts today. That what seems impossible in, in our ability... It's possible with God. Come on, the God that we serve, He wants us to have unreasonable or impossible requests. He wants us to ask them because I really believe that if we want to see impossible tasks accomplished, it's going to take people praying impossible requests so God can show off in His glory as He meets us at that place. So what is it? Impossible tasks need people to pray impossible requests so God can show up. I know that God wants to show up in your life. He wants to show off in your life. He wants to show off in our church. We're just going to keep petitioning, keep praying, keep grabbing hold of God. And, and even as a new initiative in our church, what we've got on our, on our website, we've put a prayer wall button in there. And that's where we can just as a church, things that we're, we're believing for, we can just put that on that wall. And you can go on there as well and you can pray for people's needs. There's a button you can push that once you've prayed for somebody, it lets them know that you've prayed for them. But come and go to that website, go to the prayer wall, because I just know in this season, not in this, just in this season, every season, we've got to keep praying and keep laying hold of God. But we're going to read today in Joshua 10, verses 12 to 13. A bit of background information for this story is that Joshua is coming up um, in a battle against five kings. They've, they've uh, ganged up against him and he's in a situation that seems impossible to be able to get out of in human um, thinking. But we know that the God that we serve, he can do the impossible. But come on, let's just read this scripture in Joshua 10 verse 12 and it says this. Uh, so as the battle's going on, it says, On the day the Lord gave the Israelites victory over the Amorites, Joshua prayed to the Lord in front of all the people. He said this. This is a crazy prayer. He said, Let the sun stand still over Gibeon and the moon over the valley of... You can read that name for yourself. Then it says, So the sun stood still and the moon stayed in place until the nation of Israel had defeated its enemies. What an audacious, crazy prayer to pray. God, we need some more time to see this victory come to pass. Can you just leave the sun out a bit longer? Leave the lights on. And God answered an impossible request. See, we've got to understand, just like God answered that request, I believe that God wants to do something in our hearts as we request and, and petition Him he wants to do something in our life that develops strength and courage, that brings more of the victory of God into our life. But we have to ask, ask God, let the sun stand still. So our God is in the business of doing the impossible. I really believe that God actually loves it when we give him impossible requests because it honors who he is. We're not trying to belittle him with just saying, hey, can you just answer this little prayer? But when we come to God with the big audacious prayer, I really believe it honors Him because it shows us that we know who He is and that He can do the impossible. So come on, let's keep praying ridiculous prayers because I know that God can do something in our hearts in that season as we petition Him. Now, we can almost ask ourselves this question. When was the last time we prayed a scary prayer? Because I think when we're young in our faith, we can do it. But then as we go on with our journey, we can stop asking audacious things and impossible things. But come on, let's not live defeated. Let's keep praying prayers that's going to grow us and cause us to have strength and courage in God. Saying, hey God, if you don't come through with me here, I don't know what's going to happen. But come on, let's keep praying prayers that honor Him 
and that cause our strength and courage to grow because we need God to show up. See, sometimes we're too scared to ask God because we think it's going to fail. God's not going to come through. We start to live with, a, with, a, with an excuse of, um, what if it doesn't happen? But I've said this before, and I really believe we, we, we've got to choose as people of faith not to live in the what if it doesn't happen, but live into, in, with a mindset of, what if it does? Not doesn't, but does. See, the only difference between those two words is the NT on the end. And come on, we want to develop faith in our spirit that causes us to live with, hey, what if? Well, what if he does do it? We've got to drop the NT. What if off the what he, he doesn't do it? Now, what are the NT words that we can drop that stop us from asking God? Now, maybe the one of the things that we struggle with is we go, there's no time. That's an NT. There's no time. We go, God, uh, my back's against the wall. Everybody's coming up against me, or I need you to come through now. There's no time. Come on, let's not live in the excuse of no time. Our God can make the sun stand still. He can do the miraculous when we think there's no time. And another NT that we can struggle with at times is we've got no, uh, no talent. I haven't got the talent. I haven't got the ability. But come on, as we keep trusting in God and going on that journey, He develops what we need in our life. See, what you've got to understand is what you need, what you need to succeed in life, God has already placed within you. You just need to develop it. And come on, let's not live with that NT in our life that that's causing lack of, I don't have the talent. No, God can bring the right people along at the right time to help you. And what's another NT? There's no, well, we've got no time, no, no talent, or there's, there's no treasure. I don't have the resource. Come on, our God is our provider. I think sometimes we can get caught up in thinking that our job is our provider or, or, or our family is our provider. Come on, they're around to help us, but ultimately God is our provider and He supplies all of our needs. So come on, let's not live with a, what if it doesn't happen? Let's drop the NT and live with, what if it does happen? Let faith rise up in our spirit. Drop the NTs in our life. The no, no time, not today, no treasure, no talent. Come on, there's plenty of time. God can create time as we keep sowing in and seeing Him do something amazing in our life. But maybe the reason why you don't ask is because you've asked once and He hasn't answered you. Or you really needed God to come through and you've asked and you prayed and, and the answer didn't come. Can I tell you something? Ask again. Ask again. We've all got stories in our life where we've needed God to come through and He hasn't come through the way that we wanted to. And it caused a lot of pain in our life. But I, I want to show you what usually happens in that season if you trust in God. When, when you're asking and, and He's not answering the way that you want, there's actually something better that's taking place that I want to get to in just a moment. But I, I want to encourage us with one more scripture in Matthew 7, verse 7 and 8. And it says, this is what God tells us to do when it comes to our request about asking again. It says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receive, receives, and he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. Come on, what's that scripture saying? When we don't get the answer that we want, when the breakthrough's not happening, keep being persistent in seeking God. Seeking Him. Because what I find in the situations in life where I've been seeking God and, and the answer hasn't come the way that I wanted, what actually happened in that season, what was greater, is that I, draw, I drew closer to God because I'm seeking Him. I'm connecting with Him. I'm drawing closer to Him. And as I'm seeking and connecting and, and spending more time with God, my heart's been changed and He's beginning to change my desires to want to do what He wants in a situation rather than what I want. So even though when we're seeking and asking God, we may not get what we want, ultimately we're getting something better. We're connecting with God. We're connecting with God because you got to look at it this way. God of the universe, He created everything. He wants to connect with you and I. That absolutely blows my mind. And even when I was thinking about that this week, I even got a bit emotional that the, the God of the universe, He wants to connect with us. 
What does the scripture say? That while we were still sinners, he sent Jesus to die on the cross to pay the price for our sin, to bridge the gap between us and God. God made a way. He wants to connect with us. And many times we're working, we're, we're struggling and straining, trying to get to God, but God's already made a way. God wants to connect with us. God wants to bless us. Come on, how does, how does that change our perspective when we look at the situations and the impossible things in life? That there's a God that's for us, that loves us, that's working within us, that's drawing us closer to himself through every season. He's already blessed us with everything that we need to do well in life. Uh, I just get overwhelmed with that concept that God wants to connect with you. Sometimes we think I'm all alone, no one cares, but there's a God, all powerful, almighty, who bankrupt heaven to bridge the gap, to have relationship, to connect with us. Come, we've got to get our wonder back. You know, I've got a young family, I've got kids, and, and you just see the wonder that they have. When they see something, they, they're so in awe of it. And, and when they want something, they, just, they ask, and they keep asking, and they keep asking. I think it gets a bit frustrating sometimes. We're at the shopping center, and they keep asking and asking, being persistent for, for lollies. But they, they, they've got this wonder of, man, I... I want to see this in my life or, or I want to know more about that. And I think as we grow in our Christian walk with God, we can lose our wonder when it comes to the things of God. We stop asking questions. We stop having, asking Him impossible requests because we've let life knock the wind out of us. But I believe today that faith stirring in people's hearts, that, man, we're going to get our wonder back, that, man, this God, He's, he made a way to connect with us. He wants to bless us. Come on, let's keep petitioning. Let's keep giving him impossible requests. We can ask normal requests, but ask impossible ones because it honors him. He is a God that can do the impossible. I don't know about you, but I, I just have been feeling faith stirring my heart today because I know that God has put things in your heart that, you, that aren't a reality yet. And I don't know where you're at. Maybe you've got faith and you're still believing. Great, keep going. But maybe your faith's dying out and you're, you're sort of saying, you're letting the NT step in, step in. I'm running out of time. But can I tell you something? Keep positioning yourself under the wings of the Almighty God and He will do something amazing. Keep petitioning God because He wants to do the impossible in your life. He wants to draw you closer to Himself. But, but what happens sometimes in life, and, and I think it's, it's easier to be able to slip into this mindset, is that we can begin to worship God for what He can do or petitioning Him just for what He can do rather than drawing closer to Him, which is who He is. Seeking Him Instead of seeking Him for what He can do, seeking Him for who He is. He's God. Jesus knew all about this. In John 2, verse 23, He put it this way. Because of the miraculous signs Jesus did in Jerusalem uh, at the Passover celebration, many begin to trust in Him. Because he was performing, because he was doing great things. People were worshipping and liking what he was doing. Verse 24, it says, But Jesus didn't trust them because he knew all about people. No one needed to tell him about human nature, for he knew uh, what was in each person's heart. What was it saying? They were coming to Jesus because of what he could do rather than who he was. Come on, let's never slip into that frame of thinking. Never slip into that relationship with God where it's, I'm just doing this, God, so that you can just do the miracle. No, let's keep worshipping and honouring the miracle worker, the miracle maker in our life. It's all about drawing closer to God. Know that the, the things that God blesses us with, I see that as a bonus. But to have a relationship with God, to honour Him, to have a relationship with Him, surpasses anything that He can possibly bring into our life. Let's realize that we can connect with God. He's made a way. Let's not fall into the trap of just serving God for what we can get, but serving Him because of who He is. Amen. But you know what's amazing? The amazing thing about this story, I believe, isn't necessarily when He prayed and God answered the prayer and the sun, the sun, the sun stood still. It's what happened before this story. And it says this in Joshua 10 verse 10. It says that, the Lord threw the people into such a panic. So the enemy that was coming up against Joshua, these five kings, the Lord threw them into a panic. We keep reading on in, um, in verse 11, and it says that these people began to retreat 
down the road. And it says that the Lord destroyed them with a terrible hailstorm from heaven. They continued until they reached whatever that town is. It says the hail killed more of the enemy than the Israelites killed with the sword. Isn't it amazing? What Joshua was praying for, that the lights would stay on, the sun would stay up so that they could keep seeing a victory take place. Before he'd even asked for it, God was already working. God had already done the miracle, said that He had killed more people. This is a pretty gruesome story. That's a lot. The Old Testament's got some great stories in it. But the, the, the God had killed the enemy by throwing hailstorms at, uh, what is it? Um, hail at them. And it says that God killed more of them than what the Israelites did. That God was already working in the situation. You almost look at it that when Joshua said, keep the lights on, it's like, God, keep the lights on so I can see you continue to do a victory in my life. So let's not think that, oh, this, this request we're giving to God, it's new to God and God just thinks, oh, oh, this took me by surprise. I didn't know about it. No, let's know that God has already been working for the victory that, you're being, that you need in your life. Come on, He's doing the miraculous. He's doing the supernatural. Let's understand and keep trusting in God. Sure, we keep petitioning. Sure, we keep asking impossible requests, but know that God is already at work in your life. Come on, the answer is already on its way. Come on, let's keep close to God because God is causing a great victory. He's causing the impossible to become possible as we keep drawing close to God. He's fighting for us. And I'm going to bring it to a close right now, but... I just want to ask you a question. What is the impossible in your life? Because for all of us, it's different. Maybe it's uh, something to do with your career and your job. Maybe it's to do with your, your, the impossibles in your relationships. Maybe the impossible is with somebody that doesn't know God and you, a spouse or a loved one or a, or a friend that you want to lead to Jesus. And it just seems like it's impossible. Maybe it's, it's, it's buying a house or a financial thing. I don't know what the impossible is for your life. It's different for all of us. But just because it's different doesn't mean that it's not important. And I want to tell you today that God is working behind the scenes to see a miracle take place in your life. Come on, don't let that be something that you just say, oh, well, God's going to do it. No, keep requesting because as you request, God answers. God brings the break. God wants you to keep drawing closer to Him. And in a few moments, we're going to give people an opportunity to come to know Jesus. And also, we're going to pray for people's needs. That I want to believe with you that that thing that God has placed in your heart would become a reality. You know, I want to encourage you with the goal and the dream that God's got in your heart, that impossible thing that, that you need God to show up in. I want to encourage you, write it down. Write it down so that when God answers, you can look back and go, on this date, I prayed, I wrote this down, that God put this on my heart and I prayed and God brought a victory in my life. And I want to encourage you when you pray, just don't pray things for yourself, pray for others. Pray for those that don't know God. Pray for, for me and, and, and my wife, Melissa and our family. Pray for people because you know what, I, I do feel people's prayers when they pray. And, and I really believe that as you pray, for others, it, it, sure, it blesses that person, but it does something in your spirit. It gets your eyes off yourself and puts it on others. And we're called to serve one another. But that impossible thing, that impossible thing. You know what? It was impossible for us to come to God, to make our way to Him. So He made a way by sending Jesus to pay the price for our sins. You know, I, I want to pray for you today that maybe you're listening and, and you don't, know Jesus. You don't have a personal relationship with Him. You know what? You can have one with Him right now. Jesus, God made a way. He wants to connect with you. He wants to be, he wants to be involved in your life. He wants to be the center of your life. He wants to take you on a journey. He wants to do it uh, in relationship with you. You see, uh, I really believe that He's just one prayer away. You know, if you want to invite Jesus into your life for the first time, or maybe you, you once had a relationship with Him, but you've walked away, why don't you make a fresh decision today to give your life to Jesus? And I'm going to lead you in a prayer, and I want you to say this after me. I know that God's drawing people right now. He's drawing you into relationship with Him. Come on, respond. Don't say, I'll do it tomorrow. No, today is a day of salvation. And I want to lead you in a prayer that you invite Jesus into your life. And you can start a relationship with Him. You can, you can experience the forgiveness that only comes from God. So you can have right standing with Him. So come on, let's 
Pray this together if you want to give your life to Jesus. It goes like this. Dear God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for me. And I believe that he rose again. I confess that I'm a sinner and I repent of that. Jesus, come into my life. Wash me clean. Be my Lord and Saviour. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer, man, I believe that Jesus has come into your life. You know, we want to help you with your next step in outworking, uh, outwalking your relationship with God. The way that you can do that is uh, in the chat room, you can click the raised hand button and then push request prayer. Don't just say, oh, I won't worry about it. No, we've got people that are actually waiting live right now to pray with you and to help you. Uh, we want to send you a Bible. So click that raised hand button and request prayer. We've got people wanting to pray with you. Also on the screen, if, you, if, if you're not watching this a different way, on the screen, there's a number. You can text yes to that number and we want to get in contact, send you a Bible and help you with your next step. But you know, if you made that decision, all of heaven's rejoicing. I know that our church is rejoicing about that decision you've just made. But just before we close, I just want to pray for you. That impossible thing. Come on, maybe, maybe faith is dwindling in, in your life. But I want to fan into flames that faith right now. I want to pray that you begin to believe again and, and give God impossible requests so that we can see something supernatural take place here on earth. So keep in mind what that thing is in your life that you need God to show up with. And let's pray together right now. So God, we just thank You that You are powerful, that You're an almighty God. God, we thank You that we, as we petition You with impossible requests, that that honours You because we show and, and we have a faith knowing that You can do the impossible because what's impossible for man is possible for You. So God, we just pray that as people keep petitioning, people, people keep praying and drawing closer to You, that You do something in their spirit let faith rise up. God, maybe if there's areas in their life that you need to just to tweak and bring alignment as they draw close to you, bring that alignment. But God, we pray for maybe it's those people in our worlds that are away from you. God, we just pray that you would draw them closer to you. We even pray for our nation and our world right now with this whole COVID-19. God, it seems like it's an impossible task to get through this, but it's possible with you. And we pray for healing. God, we pray, God, for an answer to this situation. We pray for those that have got financial hardship. God, we just pray that you are their provider. But this, the, 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 the government and the jobs, they're not our provider, even though you use those things. But God, you are ultimately our provider. And we trust in you. God, have your way in people's lives. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said... Amen. Amen. So let me encourage you, go to our website, um, find the prayer wall, put your requests there. Maybe grab some things that you grab some people's requests that you can pray for. But I want to encourage you, church, I always say this, be blessed and let's keep inspiring people to live for Jesus.